In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul recollects his arrival to Corinth. He says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now, there are some who suggest that Paul's weakness was perhaps an illness. Potentially the illness or even ailment of the eyes alluded to in Galatians or his famous thorn in the flesh mentioned in 2 Corinthians. In the context, I think weakness is better understood as a spirit of humility, contrasting with the lofty pridefulness found amongst some in the church leadership in Corinth to which he was now writing. Paul's stress on his own weakness was to emphasize not his rhetorical inabilities, but the inherent power in the gospel of Christ crucified. What then of fear and trembling? It's hard for me to imagine that after all that Paul had endured at this point, being beaten and stoned, after his imprisonment and serving as a catalyst for riots on, on more than one occasion, being chased out of town, that, that Paul would, would be fearful, even trembling at his potential reception in Corinth. Fearful and trembling regarding the opinions of man, that's not usually Paul. In Acts, Luke states after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Aquila and Priscilla, as we learn from Paul's letter to the Romans, were not just co-workers in tent making, but he calls them co-workers in Christ Jesus. Now, the Roman historian Suetonius refers to the expulsion of all Jews from Rome who followed Christus in 49 AD. Now, while Christus was, was a clear misspelling of Christ, it shows that the gospel had already brought about significant stir in Rome 16 years following Christ's crucifixion. Now, Paul, Paul's process in, in Corinth probably comes as no surprise. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. Now, tell me if this speaks of a man of fear and trembling. When they opposed and reviled him in protest, he shook out the dust from his clothes and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. His quotation comes from the prophet Ezekiel. And if that, if that wasn't enough, he left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titus or Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. I don't know about you, but if, if I was trying to keep a low profile, setting up across the street from the synagogue wouldn't be my first choice. Well, Paul turned his attention to the Gentile mission. It's worth noting this wasn't a total abandonment of Paul's own people. After all, the very first convert mentioned after Paul's turn to the Gentiles just so happens to be Crispus, the official or ruler of the synagogue, along with his entire family. This is the Crispus that Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 1 when he states, I thank God I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. And perhaps, maybe, just, just maybe, there was something to Paul's fear after all. And Jesus was God in the flesh, but Paul, he was human, just like you and I. Maybe for a moment, Paul questioned, was he doing the right thing? Were all of these conflicts worth it? Perhaps for a moment, he was ready to head back to Tarsus for a little R&R. &R. And why would I suggest such a thing? Because of what we're told next, one night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will lay a hand on you to harm you, for there are many in this city who are my people. 
Apparently, even Paul needed to find some encouragement in the Lord to keep pressing on, to fight the good fight. And Jesus might not show up to us in a vision. We have an opportunity every day to meet him in his word and to receive the very same encouragement that Paul received. And you know, it's vital because there are so many people in, in this city who are Jesus' people too. May you not be afraid nor be silent. And trust that he is with you. Have a blessed week.